I would like to welcome you at the East London Center, where together with a group of other individuals and organizations that I will soon mention, we are launching an event titled Memorial in Exile, Orbits of Responsibility. We are here today because we believe that questions of humanity are at stake. So humanity is, of course, that we celebrate in the Olympics, the achievement of the human body. So that is what brings us together here in London in 2012. But there are other moments when the universal concept of humanity emerges. These are tragic moments when the concept of humanity is violated, when bodies are wounded and destroyed, when atrocities amount to crime against humanity. The concept of humanity thus contains great beauty and radical horror. In this event, we seek to bring these two faces of humanity together. So when we celebrate humanity, we must also speak about the other side. And we have to remember its fragility. We come to speak to you today of the problem of Bosnia, a problem that seems far away in time and space, but we hope to show you how present it is here on the site of the Olympics, both materially and politically. The thing that puts these sites and times together, Omerska concentration camp in Bosnia and the Olympic village in London, from 1992 with 2012, is the Arcelor Mittal orbit. So please allow to explain. In 1992, during the Bosnia war, the Omerska mine in Prijedor municipality was transformed and used as a concentration camp by Serbian, Bosnian Serb forces. So my colleagues will soon tell you about the horrors and war crimes committed there. In 2004, Arcelor Mittal assumed majority ownership of Omerska mine and resumed commercial mining operations. In 2005, Arcelor Mittal made a commitment to the survivors and their families to finance and build a memorial on the grounds of Omerska mine. So seven years later, and 20 years after the war crimes committed there, where genocide was also performed, they still, there is no space for public commemoration. So still no space public commemoration exists. The Omerska mine is located in this part of Bosnia that is now named Republika Srpska. It is an area that was ethnically cleansed during the war, where genocide was performed and kept almost entirely ethnically pure after it. So those few survivors who had returned, the returnees, are still subjected to institutional and social discrimination in every level. Arcelor Mittal, committed to good community relations, has aligned itself with the majority of the local population those mostly antagonistic to the returnees and their desire to see commemoration on the site. So furthermore, in line with the social and political bias against the returnees, the company still maintains discriminatory employment practices against the non-Serb population. Now, instead of building the long overdue memorial in Bosnia, we see Arcelor Mittal has misplayed its creativity here in East London, and this for its self-promotion. This April, while visiting Bosnia for, with our colleagues from Goldsmiths, we were banned from entering an Arcelor Mittal operated Omerska mine. In an informal meeting with the director of the mine, a while complaining about the exclusion from the site, he proudly confirmed to us that symbolic quantities of iron ore from Omerska mine were used in the steel that went into London's newest landmark. So following, following the path of the material and that of corporate responsibility has, as you see, brought us right here. 
As long as Omarska could not become a site of memory, as long as denial is performed materially, discursively, and socially, and until such time that ArcelorMittal faces up to its responsibilities, London's Olympic Tower is hereby renamed the Omarska Memorial in Exile. Uh, thank you, Milica, and good afternoon to you all. As Milica mentioned, I will say a few sentences about the history and geography of the Omarska camp, which is one of the topics here and today. Uh, in 1991, the Socialist Federative Republic of Yugoslavia, consisted of six federal units, began to disintegrate in the bloody wars which started in Slovenia and Croatia, and then spread to Bosnia and Herzegovina. In fact, the war in Bosnia was the most terrible one of the all the Yugoslav wars, having in mind that from 1992 till 1995, more than 100,000 people were killed. The war in Bosnia ended by signing the Dayton Peace Agreement, which de facto split the country into two entities, Republic of Srpska, which literally means Serbian Republic, which is important not to mix with the Republic of Serbia, and the other entity called Federation of Bosnia and Herzegovina, which is actually Muslim or, or Bosnia Croat entity. Now, please allow me to show you where is actually the location of Prijedor, the municipality where Omarska mine is located. It is located in the northwestern part of Bosnia and Herzegovina. The city and the municipality of Prijedor, in which Omarska camp and mine was and still is, now is the part of the entity of Republika Srpska. Before the war, the relative majority of population in Prijedor were Muslims or Bosniaks that consisted some 49% of total population and today within the Republic of Srpska some 14% of non-Serbs are living in the city. The non-Serb population was hit by ethnic cleansing that began in May 1992 and lasted for three months. During that period, 94% of all Bosnian or all Bosnian and Croats were expelled. During the operation of ethnic cleansing, more than 3,300 people were killed and 40,000 people were expelled. But before they were expelled, thousands of people passed through the concentration camps that were opened in May 1992. Ternopolje Keraterm and probably the most notorious one, Omarska. Omarska concentration camp was established on 25 May 1992 and at least 3,334 people passed through this camp, including 37 women that were repeatedly raped for three months. It is estimated that at least 700 people were killed in the camp. The camp was located in the mi inside the mine and the buildings, such as administrative building, the hangar, the White House, and others were used for holding their p prisoners, torturing them and killing them. The majority of these objects are in function within mine today. The British journalist Penny Marshall and Ed Williami discovered the camp on 6 August 1992 and soon the camp was closed. Regarding the Omarska mine itself, it was functioning till the beginning of the war and it was organized as worker self-management, a socialist concept that was the basis of social and economic system of Yugoslavia. The mine was closed till 2004 when Mittel Steel Company, today ArcelorMittal, bought the shares of the mine and began a joint venture business operation with, with already existing state company. As from 1998, some members of the community, which were expelled in 1992, began to return to their homes. However, till then, they have been living a completely new reality, different from the one existing before the war. They live in the city, which is no longer multicultural as it was, and most important, in the city where it is not pub publicly recognized the crimes of which they were the victims. The names of the streets were changed, names of the squares, schools, literally everything. For example, the name of the monument in front of the Arcelor Mittal Prijedor headquarters is named to the fighters for the freedom of the Serbian people. And there are dozens of similar examples. There is why few questions we can make now. 
What are the consequences of public negation and relativizations of the crimes against humanity and war crimes? And what are the consequences of not permitting publicly visible recognition of someone's trauma, suffer, and pain? With the discriminatory laws and bylaws, with the public neg negation of the crimes, the war continues through the different means. The war in which the ethnic divisions seems complementary to the divisions between perpetrators and victims, and it provides a framework for the perpetuated existence of the camp, of course, this time without the barbed wire or sniper's nests around it. We can say that, in fact, it perpetuates the politics of war and segregation to which many members of Prader's municipality members are still exposed. That creates a constellation of relations where we have ethnic victimization and divisions in society. When it is not possible to publicly articulate survivors' trauma, then the trauma is articulated through the reproduction of the politics based only on ethnic identities as their foundations, the politics that actually acted as a trigger for open animosities in the beginning of the 90s. Thank you, and I, I would uh, like to give the floor back to Milica. Archelor Mittal Orbit cast a shadow of shame of over London. That's the title of my uh, speech. The following statement is being presented on behalf of the group of Guardians of Amarska, <coughs> which at the moment has over 6,500 members, founded on April 4, 2012, and to be registered soon as an association. <coughs> as well as on behalf of the association, survivors and witnesses of genocide from Bosnia and Herzegovina, which paid our trips, mine and Rezak's, to, to, to London, and is of course supporting us uh, in any sense, and supported by the foundation of the former camp prisoners of Bosnia and Herzegovina in the Netherlands. I hope you will understand that some remarks will refer to myself as a former prisoner of the concentration camp of Marska and Manjača. Bosnia was the scene of the bloodiest conflict in Europe since the World War II. In that conflict, a campaign of extermination was organized by the Bosnian Serb army in Priedor, area in which they conducted mass executions rapes, concentration camps were opened, and other war crimes. In one word, genocide. Regardless what the tribunal thinks of it in the case Karadzic. The final outcome was, according to this information, 3,173 civilians killed, including 102 children. Let me remind you, children not killed during shellings, but kill, killed by executions mostly. From Priedor and 256 women, of which five women killed in Omarska camp. One of them was sister of our great friend, Husse Hajic, here present. 31,000 people were detained in death camps, Ternopoli, Omarska, and Kerater. And eventually some 53,000 people expelled. If you need statistics, 58% of people in Prijedor were non-Serbs in 1991, according to census in ex Yugoslavia. In 1993, there were 3.75 Serbs, I'm sorry, non-Serbs in Prijedor, which prosecutor in the case, Kar Kovacevic, summarized as statistics of genocide. All religious, cultural, and economic objects of Bosniaks and Croats in the Prijedor municipality were destroyed. On the 20th anniversary of suffering in Prijedor, authorities have banned commemorations in any public space in the city. Welcome to the 21st century, I would say. Enjoy the Olympics this year. In addition, now we have a big corporation, ArcelorMittal, the biggest steel producer in the world, as you know, richest British living who are blocking access to the former concentration camp in Omarska. Our attempts to negotiate some kind of a solution with Mittal have started in 2004. After the initial letter sent in November 2004 by, by us to Mr. Lakshmi Mittal here in London, together with the first book written about Omarska, Tenth Circle of Hell, written by Reza Kukanovic here next to me, and the letter to Mr. Roland Bahn, 
the Dutch director, former CEO of Metal Steel for Europe in Rotterdam, we were invited for a meeting with Mr. Bahn on January 14, 2005. I and Mr. Stan Firand here present, recording there, thank you Stan, were promised during this constructive meeting the following. The survivors, family members of those murdered in the camp of Marska in 92, but also any other visitors, will be allowed to visit the former camp on 24th May and 6th of August as chosen commemoration days. 24th of May was the day of attack on Kozirats, where I was, where I lived all my life till the war. And 6th of August was the day of the beginning of the closure of a Marska camp. Furthermore, the visit on other days will be allowed upon request. The notorious White House, the building where all inmates were tortured and very often leading to their deaths, will be preserved. And the proposal to make a memorial museum in the White House was taken to consideration and would be discussed with, I stress this, with the headquarters in London. So Mr. Lakshmi Mittal got this book here in 20 <coughs> eight years ago and was consulted regarding the, personally consulted regarding the initiative of memorial back then. In April 2005, Mr. Bahn had a phone call with me and explained that Mittal Steel has been in touch with Mr. Donald Reeves and Peter Peltz from the organization Soul of Europe, here from London again, which has been invited to work on this third proposal. Let me also stress this. After the meeting with Mr. Bahn, I asked him, could we have this on paper? He said, these are very important things, sir. He said, why do you ask this? Do, don't you trust me? And I said, as I really did, I said, yes, of course I trust you, but I think this is something we should have on paper. So we didn't get it on paper. But I will repeat this in any court, if necessary, and Stan is here to confirm my words. After a positive answer from our side on initiative to involve Soul of Europe, they already started in May 2005 with initial meetings with local NGOs and Omarska survivors in Prijedo municipality. One of them was Reza Kukanovic again, and some other people now living in, in Prijedo region. This process, or we could say a project for which According to my information, Soul of Europe received the sum of 100,000 pounds, resulted in a press conference in Banja Luka in Bosnia Herzegovina on December 1, 2005. During this conference, a representative of Mittal Steel, Mr. Will Smith, announced that Mittal would build and finance a memorial in and around the White House. This is a DVD of this conference, which Reza Kukanovic brought from Bosnia for you if, if interested. There are nine copies of that, or eight for you. It's also on YouTube, if, if necessary, to, to see it. However, after the strong resistance from the side of local government of Priedor, and due to internal discussion about the way how the Soul of Europe dealt with this process, internal between us survivors, Mittal Steel had frozen the implementation of the erection of the memorial on February 20, 2006. This can be found on the internet too. Till today, Despite several meetings with various representatives of the company in Rotterdam, Kemal Pervenich was with me together with Lee Bryant from, from London in May 2006 in Rotterdam, meeting with Midmittal again. In Luxembourg, I was there with their representatives in 2007. Kozerats, when some of them visited so-called House of Peace, a, a kind of museum in Kozerats with a lot of pictures of all the missing persons from Kozerats. And in Priedor, last meeting on 8th of May 2011, as well as many phone calls, emails, letters, ArcelorMittal has done nothing. Even worse, we found out that without any consultation, the White House has been painted, wiping out the blood traces. Even an old chair used for torture disappeared. This means that the first promise of Mittal has been broken. Here I would like to stress that from a legal point of view, the company purposely destroyed evidence of war crimes. This year they denied access to the camp ranks and buildings to students from Munich, representatives of Goldsmiths University, as you know, four faces of Amarska, Milica Tomic and Sirjan and others, local NGOs who wanted to commemorate the 20th anniversary of genocide in the region. At the same time, instead of building the memorial in Amarska, one of the most notorious camp after the Second World War, ArcelorMittal invested its money, I think 60 million pounds, to build a monument in London for the Olympic Games. As far as, I, as far as I'm concerned, and I agree with, with all my friends here, 
This monument to the Olympic spirit is really the orbit of shame. Monument in exile for a mascot, yes. We are certain that British people are not aware of the fact that their newest landmark may have somebody's bones built in it. Families and the survivors of the Marska camp are appalled at, at Mittal's policies and behavior. There are still more than 1,000 people missing in Prieder, of which many are Marska prisoners. There are indications that many corpses have been left inside the pit of the mine, meaning that human bones could be here in London today in this, in this monument. This big orbit monument makes a dark shadow over London. At least, this is how many survivors and others think of it. Although the City of London Olympic Committee have nothing to do with 92 events, nor the current policy of Mittal towards us as survivors and the neglections of history of Bosnia and Herzegovina and Europe, we also invite the wider community to take distance from the Mittal approach so far. Now I will read the four requests I'm not begging anyone anymore. We are requesting the following. We ask that Archelon Mittal allow us full access to the site of former Marska camp to all buildings. We expect and urge Archelon Mittal to immediately stop this shameful policy and finally build the memorial in Marska as previously promised. We do not expect or ask the secession of production but we do ask that the new mine complex is built to exploit the iron ore instead of the one which was used as a concentration camp and could be considered as a mass grave. Until then, we will be free to consider the London orbit our memorial in exile. We appeal to ArcelorMittal and the City of London to make a real copy of the White House beneath the current orbit monument to commemorate those whose bones may be melted in orbit. Some time ago, we invited Mr. Lakshmi Mittal personally for a meeting to solve out this issue. My emails were not even answered. I use this opportunity to repeat this invitation and ask publicly for a meeting with the representatives of the survivors of the camp. I also invite Mr. Mittal, the Major of London, and the delegation of British government to pay tribute to the victims and join us on 6th of August this year for the 20th commemoration day of the beginning of closure of the concentration camp of Marska. Show us at least that you respect everything I'm saying today by coming there and be with us. These guys have own, their own planes. They can fly one day from London to Banja Luka and back if they want. In the end, let me remind you that <coughs> it was the British great people and I'm thankful for that from the beneath of my heart. I used to say I don't like journalists because they always make something different than what you say. But I also know the journalists are the lighthouse of the world. And what Ed Williamy, Penny Marshall, and Ian Williams did, discovering the camps, saving many lives, my definitely. Because I was in the very next group to be killed. And probably Kemal, his, and Rezak, and many of our, our friends who were not allowed to come here because Sudbin Music, Mirsa Duratovic, and Fikret Alic, the guy behind the barbed wire in Ternopole camp, did not get visa. Although invited by goldsmiths, although the tickets were paid, etc. I will not go on on that, but it's very disturbing me today. We have... Uh, come here to ask the British people to help us preserve the memory of those who cannot be here today because they did not survive the horrors of Omarska. I will not speak too much about Omarska, but I will put my picture from the camp made the 9th of August 92. Here I was forced to speak lies to the Serbian television from Banja Luka to explain to the world that there this was no concentration camp. This was one of the most difficult moments in my life. First of all, I was very afraid. Secondly, I did not want to lie. The great man, Jamal Paratusic, living here in, 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 in England, said to William and Penny Marshall during their visit, I quote, I don't want to lie. I cannot tell you the truth. Thank you for coming. This could cost his life. 
I had the same problem, but I had to lie because I knew it was Serbian television. None of you guys would, uh, if, if it were you, then, then it would be broadcast, but any truth would not be broadcast. So I'm here today to say, uh, to say this. These two men are now in The Hague. On 12th of May, 1992, Karadzic, on our left, presented the plan strategy how to defend Serbian Republic. The point one was, I tried to quote, a physical separation of people. The other guy is Radko Mladic, a general, who studied, of course, to be an officer, to be a man of honor, as generals should be. And he warned Karadzic and Krajsnik, his right hand, here too, I quote, Humans and people are not keys to be removed from one pocket to the other. I don't know how Mr. Karadzic and Krajnik would explain this to the world. This is genocide. So if anyone asks himself what happened in Bosnia and Herzegovina, what happened in Priedor, then Mr. Mladic gave an answer before it started or when it started. So I don't need any judge from South, South Korea with all due respect or Argentina or Great Britain to explain to me what happened in my country. Mr. Mladic said it himself before it started. And let me finalize. This is the White House we asked for, but now the time is over. This is what should be built in London, beneath orbit in order to not have a dark, sh uh, dark shame of, 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 of Marska in London. And this is what we want now, because this all was a camp. In all other buildings, people were killed, tortured, women raped. Rezak just told me this morning that the guy told him that they were collecting human brains to clean places. As you said, all women were killed. I'm sorry, all women were raped, and five of them were killed. The women were situated in other buildings than us. This all has to be a new Dachau of Europe. And let me finish with this. I heard a story that the former camp in Dachau, just after the war, there was a restaurant called Zum Crematorium. This is how people dealt with our past just after the war. Obviously, we need some time to realize what, what we need to do. And also, 20 years ago, I heard that from Stan. 20 years after the Dachau, the mayor of Dachau said he doesn't want any museum there because it's bad for the economy of the place. So I think we don't need any time to lose anymore, so I appeal once more to ArcelorMittal, to City of London, to all British people listening to me or any other people, to Municipality of Priador, to Government of Bosnia and Herzegovina, the representative of uh, Bosnian embassies here, and I hope he will bring uh, the message from this uh, uh, day to, uh, today to Sarajevo to stop ignoring us and start working on this for all of us, for the sake of all of us. Thank you very much. You can see what happened in Omarska in 1992 was very traumatic and it doesn't matter actually how long you live after those experiences, that trauma keeps following you for the rest of your life. So, you know, we, ha we have to cope with it. Some people find it really hard to cope with this sort of experience some of us perhaps cope a little bit better and what actually compounds this trauma is the fact that there has been no public acknowledgement about our suffering in, in our town and uh, this doesn't help the process of personal healing and it can't help the process of community healing and I would, I would say that if there is no process of community healing then we will descend into into a similar kind of violence at some point in the future. What has happened in Priyadar has been well documented. So far various courts, tribunals, have convicted, to my knowledge, 32 people for crimes in, in our town, mostly in, in the Omarska camp. And ever since there's been a climate of, of public denial. And um, the company which actually bought the mine 
which uh, basically owns the mine, uh, refuses to acknowledge that past. On, on their website, they very briefly mention that the mine had had a difficult past, but they don't actually reveal any further information about that. So I'd, I'd go as far as to say that th the company is complicit in this denial. Uh, what makes things even worse is the fact that just outside the mine headquarters, there's a memorial which was built by the previous company to, to their former employees of the mine who actually died on different front lines during the war in Bosnia. And every year, uh, company owners uh, honor, honor those who died. Uh, uh, they, they lay a wreath, but whenever they're invited, and I know that they're invited by survivors to visit the Amarska camp uh, during the commemoration in August, August the 6th, every year, uh, they actually refuse to come to Amarska. And um, it's also interesting to notice that they also have human rights policy. I, I read that human rights policy, but after reading it and after all these experiences that we've had, I would say that actually the company is violating our, our rights to commemorate our past, and this cannot be justified. Um, I, I regularly go to Bosnia, and uh, I'm, I'm quite aware of what's going on. And it's also very interesting to, to notice that there's a memorial in the Omarska village, and it, it was raised, it was, I think, opened in 2006 um, to those who died on various front lines again. Uh, during the war between 92 and 95, and the memorial was opened by the mayor, uh, Marko Pavic, who announced at the opening of the memorial that, you know, it was raised to those who died for Republika Srpska, and this man keeps refusing to acknowledge that Omarska was a concentration camp. He, he even today, call, calls it some kind of investigation center, and... So it just rubs salt in, into still basically fresh wounds because I have to ask myself how come that, you know, Serbs who died can have a memorial, uh, you know, and, and people who, who were killed in Amarska cannot be commemorated. Their, their deaths cannot be commemorated. Or for, for us who are still alive, our suffering cannot be commemorate, commemorated. And uh, the mayor, he said, well, we should forgive and move on. And um, I, I myself, I'm, I'm a very forgiven person, but uh, we can't build, you know, peace and togetherness on, in, on inequality. And uh, it's not, it's not okay that local Serbs can still commemorate events from the Second World War, and they they keep ignoring uh, what happened in 1992. I've worked with with various people from, from Arsenal and Mittal, and on one occasion I told one of their employees that this problem is not going to go away, so it's got to be resolved. And uh, on a separate occasion, this person told me that actually buildings within the mine which were used uh, to incarcerate people like ourselves and which were used for torture and for murder are basically worthless, but they couldn't give them to us, and it, it, was, it was a big but. Uh, so the company owners um, have basically sided with uh, people who, who committed those terrible crimes, and, and it's just not acceptable. When I, and, and this person also revealed to me uh, with some strange um, uh, kind of pride that Arcelor has supplied steel for, for, for the Freedom Tower at, at ground zero. I was, I was actually shocked when I heard that, but it was even a bigger shock when I read a couple of weeks ago that some iron ore from the Amarska mine has been used to build ArcelorMittal orbit here in London. It was, it was actually gut-wrenching to, to read that. Um, and this process has been a process about uh, trying to have some kind of memorial on site of, of the former uh, Omarska camp has been really traumatic and um, it's actually not about what should be done but it's about what's necessary if we are if we are to move on and if we are to to, to build some kind of shared future and um, 
you know, when this all started, uh, it was not committed by individuals, the Hague Tribunal. Uh, it's in their statute, they are trying individuals, but it, it was all a form of institutionalized violence. And this institutionalized violence has not stopped ever since. So even today, you know, this kind of violence continues. Thank you. Čitajući moju knjigu, Nobelovac Eli Wiesel je rekao Dante nije bio u pravu, pa kao nema devet, nego deset krugova. After reading my book, uh, the winner of Nobel Prize, Eli Wiesel, said Dante was not right. The hell doesn't have nine circles. Eli Wiesel je i sam prošao pa kao njemačkih logora i prepoznao naravno ono o čemu sam pisao i pristao da napiše predgovor za ovu moju knjigu. Mr. Eli Wiesel has been himself through concentration camps and he of course recognized what the Marska was and that's why he wrote um, forward for, for my book. U tekstu on kaže da pakao nije u onom svijetu koji će doći, nego ovdje, u ovom svijetu. In the forward he says the hell is not on the other side of the world, the hell is here in this world. Ja sam Omar koji je bio od prvoga do posljednjega dana. I was in Omar in Omarska from the first till the next last day. Poznavao sam dječaka koji je gledao kada su njegovom ocu polomili obe ruke. I knew a boy who had to look how both arms of his father were broken. Izbili zube, kršili rebra. He broke his teeth, they were beating on his shoulders. Od udarca u glavu lobanja mu je pukla 4,5 cm. From one hit to his head, his skull was broken with 4,5 cm. Taj dječak je moj sin. That boy is my son. Ja sam ipak preživio pa kao mrski. I still survived the hell of Marska. Nažalost, mnogi nisu. Unfortunately, many did not. Ja sam ponosan što će moja Bosna konačno biti u orbitu. And I'm proud that my Bosnia will finally be in orbit. Dio moje Bosne bit će tamo. Part of my Bosnia will be there. Ali mi je žao što će i krv bosanska biti tamo. But I'm also feeling very sorry that also Bosnian blood is in there. Ja sam bio u izbjeglištvu u Norvešku. I was in exile in Norway. I kada su me pitali da u što manje riječi pokušam objasniti šta se to događalo u Bosni, and when they asked me to explain in just a few words what happened in Bosnia. Ja sam im odgovorio u formi pjesme. I answered in a, in a form of poem. Ja sam autor šest knjiga poezije pa sam tu na svome. I'm also author of six books of, of poems so it's my own uh, field. A pjesma ide ovako. This is how it goes. Ja sam imao kuću. I had a house. I moj komšija Rajko imao kuću. My neighbor Rajko also had a house. Ja sam imao sina. I had a son. I moj komšija Rajko imao sina. My neighbor Rajko as well. 
a onda je došao rat. Then the war started. Ja sam svome sinu kupio kompjuter. Before the war I bought a computer for my son. Moj komšija Rajko je svome sinu kupio pušku. My neighbor Rajko bought a gun for his son. And then the war came, so there was a living state. Tada je moj komšija Rajko imao dvije kuće. Then, my neighbor Rajko had two houses. A njegov sin i pušku i kompjuter. And his son had now a gun and a kompjuter. A moj sin je zajedno sa mnom bio u Omarskoj. My son was together with me in Omarskoj. A Rajko sin. To the other. Rajko je sin je poginuo pucajući na gradačac u kojem i danas živi moj narod. Rajko je sin je poginuo pucajući na gradačac u kojem i danas živi moj narod. Eto to je ta kratka pjesma ili nekakav moj odgovor u formi pjesme. To je moj odgovor u formi pjesme. Moram da kažem da sam vrlo ponosan na one ljude koji su bili sa mnom u logoru. I must stress that I'm very proud to all people who have been with me in the camp. Ja sam gledao kada sin umire na rukama otcu. Because I was looking when the son was dying in the arms of the father. Kada otac umire na rukama sina when the other father is dying in the arms of his son. Nikad nisam bio suze. But I never saw tears. Zato sam ponosan na te ljude. That's why I'm proud of these people. I would like to uh, read to you uh, a text from um, Anirban Gupta, Nig uh, Gupta Nigam, who is um, a researcher based in Delhi who wrote, uh, who's been following the, the events, uh, um, the set of events around the, the, around the orbit and al also the, the, um, the work of the organi organizers of uh, today's press conference. Uh, he wrote a text on July 1st called Olympics, Art and the Orbit of Capital, uh, from which, which I'd like to read a, a short extract. Um, and I feel that it's uh, important to have this voice from India uh, present among us. So sort of by giving the voice to his text, we also sort of acknowledge um, you know uh, what 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 is the the global the global sort of vision right um so i i i read this to you now criticizing criticizing arcelor metal is important the company's arrogant actions might just mark the first significant act of corporate delinquency committed by an indian company with global ambitions the problematic politics of a major corporation from the formerly colonized world seems to signal to a larger shift in the global structures of power. Indian capitalists have arrived. They will violate ethics and principles as much as anyone else across the world from now on. But what about the orbit as an artwork? Rather than condemn Anish Kapoor for doing business with ArcelorMittal, it might be more productive to see attempts to mark the orbit as a memorial, as a radicalization, of Kapoor and Mittal's vision. What they promised only in rhetoric is now being done in practice. Uh, I'd just like to briefly mention that this is very much in the spirit uh, of a letter uh, that was written by the organizers um, to Anish Kapoor and Cecil Bauman, who's the, the, the architect uh, involved uh, in so the production of the, of the, of the orbit. Um, which the, I, I don't have the letter here, but I just wanted to kind of mention that uh, I think this this sort of like uh, Anirban's text sort of kind of performed this uh, this this kind of uh, move that that also informed our own work. Um, so I continue. The questions raised about the public use of public art of this kind can be turned on their head when a community stakes claim to this structure. These claims are made possible because of the material power of steel to forge a connection between two disparate localities 
events and times. Given ArcelorMittal's harsh clampdown on visitors in Omarska, there is reason to believe that the Indian in London will react strongly to any attempts at making the orbit. However, it is precisely in this contestation over mar ma marking and remarking that other, more significant connections might open up. These connections can link dispersed geographical regions where corporate power, aesthetic practice, and large-scale mining are colliding in interesting and dangerous ways. The camp in Omarska, the Olympic Tower in London, and the vast tribal regions of India where rampant, violent mining has become the norm." End quote. This is also um, very much, I feel, resonates with, uh, with the work uh, that we are doing at the, at the Center for Research Architecture, which, which is attempting to look at this complex relationship between materials and politics, and perhaps the history of capitalist sorcery. Thanks. Before I begin, what I would like to do, I, I would like to acknowledge uh, Sudbin Music, who played a crucial role in bringing this group of people together today. Many of us who are here today traveled to uh, both to Serbia and to Bosnia-Herzegovina in April, and we had many, many um, heated discussions and debates long into the night, and Sudbin in particular at a certain moment, I remember it very, very clearly, he implored us by saying, do anything you can to help us because all of our uh, demands, our pleas, all of our um, requests have got fallen on deaf ears. And so that really began, that was the beginning of an attempt to try and um, activate something here in the city of London um, in the hope that someone might listen who could potentially start to um, produce a, a culture and a history uh, capable of transforming the past into something uh, productive for the future. I'm going to read the very last paragraph of a text that I wrote, uh, and it's available. Uh, it's available online, and it will, and it's also going to be um, published on Open Democracy. I brought up a slide because this is directly from the ArcelorMittal Orbit website uh, where there's a curious omission that there is even a mine in Bosnia. I'm going to begin by reading a short ex excerpt from the May 5th press release that was um, distributed by ArcelorMittal in relationship to the ongoing contestation at Amarska. Quote, ArcelorMittal is not taking sides in this debate without engagement or prior agreement of the local communities and local international stakeholders concerned. The company has always shared the aim of finding a long-term solution and will remain prepared to participate in discussions or cooperate fully with any agreed solution concerning the sensitive topic." End quote. My words. As the largest steel producer in the world, ArcelorMittal can surely use their considerable influence to overturn the local politics of denial and actively participate in healing the fractured communities out of which their very fortunes are generated. Yet they insist on not taking sides. Not taking sides in an area where persecution and injustice continue is not neutrality, but a political position by default. Not taking sides maintains the impasse of the present and forecloses the possibility of moving forward. Not taking sides means the perpetuation of violence by other means. Surely extracting mineral and capital resources out of the physical infrastructure of massacre is a form of taking sides, the sides of a perpetrator whose historic actions continue to contaminate the very means by which ArcelorMittal's material wealth is generated. According to a recent report in Reuters, ArcelorMittal is currently in, in negotiations to acquire the remaining state-owned shares of the Lulubia mine complex. I ask, what percentage of ownership is necessary for figures to be converted into incontrovertible facts that truly matter for people still traumatized by the Balkan Wars of the 90s? 
Must they wait for 100% ownership before full responsibility is assumed for the production of a memorial? On August 6, survivals were returned to the ArcelorMittal Prigidor mine to remember those who were tortured and killed, as well as those who survived, but who endure their pain and trauma in private. With no space of collective public mourning to confront the wounds of the past, and until such time that a memorial is constructed at Amarska, we, here in London, reclaim the ArcelorMittal orbit as a memorial in exile, a towering public acknowledgement that the orbits of corporate responsibility are always also close to home. Thank you. Uh, so, uh, basically, I'm going to say just a couple of words about the overall activity of the monument group from Belgrade and four, four, four faces of Omarska, which is, um, which is a group of uh, diverse uh, practitioners, students, intellectuals from Belgrade, but not only from Belgrade, but from all over ex-Yugoslavia, which I think is extremely important, that has been working on this um, topic, on this issue of a Marska concentration camp for, for a while already. The ongoing work of the monument group, that, and also that of Four Faces of Amarska, and that of our hosts here at Goldsmiths, is that of questioning the politics of memory, rather than affirming it. The experiences of our work in Yugoslavia, that means in Serbia, Bosnia, and Kosovo, but also in Lebanon, Bangladesh, and in Palestine, has taught us some lessons. We have observed the ways in which political nationalism has hijacked the concept of the victim. Victimhood has, of course, been used to justify violent acts of exclusion. We have also seen how memory, just like denial, could function as a continuation of war by other means. Memorials often become sites of fervent nationalism. We are thus as committed to the concept of memory as we are to, the criti to critically examine it. And this leads to the dialectical inversions and paradoxes, like the one in which the site of monumental grandeur here in London becomes the complex result of denial and silencing. We are now committed to materialization of memory in a moment as such. It is the threat of history, geography, and material flow that has led us to London and landed us on the orbit. Uh, the, the moment in which actually the access will be allowed for the uh, survivors is going to open a new chapter in the work of uh, Omarska Group and the Monument Group. I would just like to stress two important things, really. Um, while doing this since 2004, um, I, I started with a kind of duty of a survivor for the ones who died, the same as, as Rezak said. But in the meantime, I realized that remembering our past, exactly what Germans did with their past in the Second World War, is actually a key for the future. This is the way how people can connect again, because while acknowledging what happened, Serbs who don't have anything to do with that can show it to the victims, survivors. So we can have a situation like here that Milica is here next to me, and, and many other of, of us are being friends again with each other, despite all of this. So please remember, this is something which is crucial also for European future, because if we have Balkans divided, we will have some time in the future. Kemal said that again, we will have another war. And, and this is why this is not anymore only a question of Balkans or survivors, it's, it's for our own sake and uh, for our children. And uh, finally, I just said, I have a duty of a survivor. And I know many of us have it. Kemal, Reza, and many others, Sudbin, who are working on this. But I would like to ask you to give a big applause for people from Belgrade and from Serbia who are with us and Goldsmiths University who don't have a duty of a survivor. But they are with us because they acknowledge what I'm telling you. I think they are really the heroes of, of this day, even for me, because they organized all of this. And they are with us beca because they understand the message I'm telling you. Thank you. Okay. Um, well, just to say, if it wasn't clear to anybody, um, it's not just metaphorical that bones and blood are part of, of this orbit uh, uh, structure. Uh, the fact is that bulldozers um, have been used many times over 
in order to destroy every site uh, which was revealed as as a, a burial, uh, not a burial, but as a uh, as, as a grave, uh, um, where the the bones of uh, uh, concentration camp uh, murdered people were laid or left to rot. In fact, so. Um, the the mining is in fact uh, taking place in the soil which contains particles, if not whole bones, of, of people who were murdered there. So therefore, we can say that that is there in orbit, in, in this structure. It contains it. It's not metaphorical. It is physical. When our group was there in April, we had an accidental encounter with the director of Arcelor, Mittal Prigidor, okay. and he was very proud and boastful in, 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 in uh, claiming or in, in confirming that, in fact, material from the mine at Amorska had made it into the Arcelor Mittal orbit. The sculpture, actually, if you read any of the press materials, is actually portrayed as containing symbolic quantities of iron ore from around the world, the global operations of ArcelorMittal. That was the slide that I had brought up. So it was a question that we had. He confirmed it. And then yet, if you look at the website, there's, as I said, there's no mention that there is even a mine in Bosnia-Herzegovina. But certainly we have the confirmation to A.L. and Milica that, in fact, that connection is there, not, not metaphorically, as you say, but absolutely material. Uh, materially there. Metal orbit total budget. It contains 1,500 tons of steel, 35,000 bolts, and 19,000 liters of red paint. It will receive up to 770 visitors per hour. Its height is 114.5 meters. The Arcelor Metal orbit can accommodate 5,000 visitors a day and has the potential to attract around 1 million people during the first year of operation. For 89 days, from May till August 1992, the Amerska mine in Priyador, Bosnia, was used as a concentration camp by Bosnian Serb forces. At least 3,334 Bosniaks and Croats from Priyador were imprisoned in the Amerska camp. 700 to 800 were killed. 37 female deta detainees were repeatedly raped and tortured. Upwards of 150 men were singled out daily for execution. In the Priador region, 3,178 civilians were murdered, while more than 1,000 men, women and children are still missing. On 14th April 2012, Mladen Jelice, director of ArcelorMittal Priador, confirmed the iron ore mined at Omuska had has been used in the fabrication of the Arcelor Metal orbit. Arcelor Metal funds 19.6 million of the 22.7 million project with the outstanding 3.1 million provided by the Greater London Authority. Until such time that a memorial is constructed at Omuska, we here in London Reclaim the Arcelor Mittal orbit, a memorial in exile.